Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. We found it, uh, WCR Nation. What's up to everybody? If you're listening to this via iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, any of that stuff, what's going on? I hope you're out there making a bunch of money, and I hope you love the podcast. Um, if you're new to the podcast, what's going on? Like I said, I'm Jersey. Nice to meet you. Um, this is available as a podcast or as a video on YouTube. So however you want to watch or listen is completely up to you. Any way you do it is awesome. If you are one of the nation, if you are someone who watches the show every single week, you give us a thumbs up, you comment, you subscribe, and all that other cliche crap you hear on YouTube, um, what's going on? It is because of you I get to do this show. Genuinely, thank you for watching. I love it when you guys just send me random texts and emails throughout the week. It's like, hey, I watched this episode. Uh, it was awesome. All that stuff. Anything you guys send me is ridiculously cool. I really do appreciate it. Genuinely. So thank you for that. And if you are one of the elite, if you watch, you listen, you thumbs up, you subscribe, you've done all that fun stuff, and you comment, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, Big or little, any supplies that you have. I am a uh, window cleaning resource rep. I would love to do that. That is how I get to uh, eat every day. So as you can tell, I eat every day. I don't miss meals. <clears throat> it's winter weight. It's winter weight, right? We all got it. Get out of winter. I'm pretty sure. At least that's what I say to myself to make myself feel better. But, <laughs> but thank you. And if you want to order your supplies through me, or you want to shoot me a text and say what's up, love the show, hate the show, your nose is crooked, what's up with your uh, hair that day, anything you want, shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. That is legitimately my cell phone number. Definitely do that. I really do. Um, I get... A ton, I mean, you know, upwards of a dozen messages, if not more, every single week from people just saying, what's up? Uh, they check in, they usually tell me where they're from and all that. So that is super awesome, guys. I really do appreciate that. Genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. So if you hear me or you talk to me, tell me you watch. I'd love to hear it. A couple of shout outs that I do want to do this week is, first and foremost, Carlos Sadua. I probably butchered your last name. I'm sorry. But man, you are everywhere. I love seeing your name. It always pops up. Uh, you won one week, I believe, and you comment on everything. I just love it. I love seeing you on there. So what's going on? Um, also, Brian with Brightview in Florida. I, I'm not even going to attempt your last name, man. No, uh, Brian is an awesome dude. Uh, I appreciate it. He is also a loyal listener and watcher and all that good stuff. So what's going on, man? Thanks for everything. Um, and uh, Aaron, the man, Rudy. Aaron, what's going on? Uh, haven't said what's up to you in a while, so I just wanted to do so. Um, before I get into the winner winner chicken dinner this week, I want to let you know, if you're listening to this on iTunes, this is a big push for what we're doing is trying to get this out there, ranking better on iTunes and getting out there so more people could find it. So if you could, do me a favor and share this anywhere you can share it that means the world to me and if you are listening to this itunes google play all those places take a second right now and just give us a review go into itunes uh there's the star says rate this rate it give us a rating you could say something you cannot just rate it we want to rank it better we want to get it bigger um than it even is now so Definitely, definitely do that, uh, and uh, I appreciate it. So, winner, winner this week is Mark Rhodes, man. What's going on? Uh, also, another person who is always commenting, so what's going on, man? Definitely appreciate you. Congrats. Just shoot me your um, uh, address that you want the uh, stuff sent to. You want a swag bag. That's the $50 credit for window cleaning resource and the T-shirt. Uh, all the other stuff, the pin and sticker packs and things like that that are already preset into those. You won. Congrats, man. High five. High five. Uh, just email that to me, josh at windowcleaningresource.com. And if you want to win, all you got to do is comment down below. Just go ahead and comment uh, anything you want on YouTube, and we pick a random winner every single week. So there you go. That is the ramble for this week. And this week, we are talking about reinvesting. I know. This is one of those things, it's like, well, you know, it's better than 
reinvesting, saving your money, you know. Yes, it is. And everybody is different. Every single person has a different amount of money that they have to spend, you know. Some guys have millions, okay. They make a million a year. They go, okay, well, out of that million, I'm going to take 250000 and that's what I'm going to reinvest in my company. You can change that. If you're new in business, very, very strong. The faster you grow is all contingent on how much you can reinvest. If you have a spouse that does work uh, and you can live off her income for the first year or two, reinvest everything as much as you possibly can without putting yourself in the poorhouse and uh, having to start a GoFundMe page for, um, you know, you being broke. Don't do that. Um, so reinvest as much as you can, but what do you reinvest in, right? I mean, what gets you kind of the best bang in the buck? You can't just floppily put your money every single where, you know? If you got a computer that's a year old, why would you buy another computer, right? So you have to do this smart. You have to kind of look at everything and say, okay, well, what's going to get me a return? What's going to grow this thing, right? It's a baby. You started it from nothing. Now you got to nurture it. In the beginning, it can't do anything on its own, right? You have to nurture it. You have to give it all your attention, all your time, all your money to reinvest. As it grows, eventually, it's going to get into uh, high school. You're not going to like it very much. It's going <laughs> to, right? The seven-year itch part, you're going to just be humdrum, bored of everything, right? But then eventually you may want to sell your company. And there you go off to college. You can still see it every now and then, but uh, somebody else uh, has taken it, right? You've, you've let it get married off to someone, you know? So that's kind of the, the theory of, of business, but you have this, whatever stage you're in is how much attention you have to give it. So here's some of my ideas where I like to reinvest. I like to put my money back into business to help it grow. This thing that you have it will be double the size next year if you do double the work to get it there. You know, it is completely up to you. You can't do anything wrong. If you don't want to grow, fine. You're at that stage where now it's just a young adult and it's just doing its thing, right? But if you want it to be bigger, if you want it to be better, if you want it to grow at all, you need to put more into it. And here's some ideas um, that I like to do. And first and foremost, like I said, I'm a window cleaning resource rep. I do sales. That's what I do. So take this with a grain of salt because I am a salesman. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But it's equipment. Equipment is the biggest one. And I'm always reminded this time of year, guys and girls that are getting into water fed that have never done it. That's one of those things. That's a big investment, right? It is a big investment to get equipment. When a squeegee costs you $25 and now you're spending $2,500 on a system, that is a big deal, right? That sets you above and beyond somebody else. So reinvesting in equipment is huge. The nice thing with equipment, which this is all kind of a no-brainer type thing, but think about it. If you have a pure water system, and I was just talking to somebody yesterday, day before about this, and they were talking about it. I said, hey, I really want this equipment because I know if I get this equipment, it puts me in the ballpark uh, with the big leagues. It puts me in the same arena as the uh, professional teams. I'm, I'm there now where I can bid at the same price. I'm not doing a house with Frenchies for a different price than they're doing it for Frenchies with a pure water system. Uh, they know they're going to be safer, but they know that they're going to be able to get up three, four stories without having to get a lift and doing a lift through cost and all that fun stuff and insurance. They may be able to do it. They just know, right? They can look at it and say, this is going to bring me and my company to a whole other level where now I'm playing on the field with the big dogs. Now, before you go and tell me all about how wrong I am because you hate pure water, I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, if you don't do pure water, that's perfectly fine. If depending on who you're going with, there's high rise guys out there who would never ever want to even get into pure water because it just doesn't come up. These guys are running chairs and and uh, uh, swing stage and all that other fun stuff. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to get this stuff. I'm just telling you my thoughts, right? That's one of them. The other big one is that you work faster. If you work faster, you can get more done in a day, right? If you remember before computers came out, people said, oh man, we're only gonna be working four hours a day. That's completely wrong. We're now still working eight hours a day, but we're doing 16 hours worth of work and that's eight hour a day now that we have computers. Which none of us really, I mean, obviously we wish that we weren't. But if you're working in an office, listening to this, you're just sitting there working for eight hours doing twice as much work. Here's the thing. If you get better equipment, now you can do twice as much work. Which, if you want to only work half the time, perfect. Awesome. 
the freedom of this job is what brings a lot of people to do it. If you want to make more money, you can do that also. Now you can do twice the amount of work in the same amount of time, and you've just doubled your income. You've just doubled it. Now, you have to go get the work, of course, but if you have it, you can run. If you're running four or five weeks out, man, what are you doing? Pull that back. You could do three weeks out, which is still ridiculous, and now you can book more people. You can go out there and chase more. You have more time to do things, right? It's like adding another crew, but just by increasing the equipment. Better equipment, just better all around, right? If that's what you're investing in, that's always my first go-to that I do in my business, just personal. Um, If you have worn out equipment, maybe it's time to buy a new one. Like there's some buckets out there, bucket on the belts that are made of light colors. They look really dingy. They may still work fine, but now I'm in somebody's house and my equipment looks like junk. My handles are all duct taped. You know, it's time to reinvest. Look at a professional company. Look, look at a big company, like a big construction company or just a big company in general. What do they have? They have the best equipment. The cleanest, the neatest, the nicest looking equipment because they are the best. It's an image now. People associate them with being the best. They have to be that. Now that's what you can do. Yes, it's kind of petty. I get that. But if you're showing up to somebody's house and you look like a dumpster, then they think your work is like a dumpster, right? So be presentable. And uh, uh, by doing that, sometimes it means new equipment. Uh, we had something called a store. in. Uh, it's on the second floor of our, our uh, offices. And it's just boxes and boxes of new equipment. If anybody breaks something or they look at it, they crack it, they don't like it, there's, uh, hey, you know what? This thing is getting beat up. Swap it out. How much is a handle? How much is a channel? Swap it out. They always have nice new gear and it always shows. Definitely. Uh, On that same line, apparel is a big one. Always be rotating shirts. Spring was always big for us because we'd get our largest shirt order in spring and we'd hold them. We'd have uh, in our, we had like an office cluster downstairs. You open up cabinets, it's just shirts. Different sizes, every single size you want. Every style that we had was different people, right? So salespeople wore collared. Uh, I wore collared and uh, the techs wore just a regular t-shirt like this. Why? Because they're like six or seven bucks. Printed, you could throw them away if they get ripped or junky. So just always be looking presentable, always be looking awesome. Now you're running up in a crispy shirt and some crispy gear, right? You look awesome. You have reinvested in your image and people are going to really, really take that. When you come in, you're making a better, better impression. The more of an impression you make, the more unforgettable you become. Keep that in mind, right? That's equipment, uh, apparel, all that stuff is kind of in that first one. But in the side of things where marketing comes in, Marketing is a big one where people sometimes forget. They go, yeah, I want to do an EDDM campaign or I want to do a door hang or something. That's the only time they buy. The only time they get new stuff printed is when they want to do something with it. But here's the thing. You should always be revamping a trifold brochure. Okay, If you have one, if you don't have one, make one. Why? It's just a great piece to pass out to people. And when you hand somebody a trifold brochure... It really shows that you're a company, a legit company where these people are, you're selling yourself. You're selling yourself as a Ferrari, right? Hand them a brochure. I redid my brochures. Uh, every year, every two years, I would get new brochures. And it would be all updated pictures. It would be better graphics. It would be cleaner looking. It would be something I worked on for a couple weeks, putting it together. Uh, new info, what services I want. Um, and I would print them up. They were always nice. They were always new. And they were always super high quality. Um, something like that. There was no point to get those. I didn't want to, oh, I got to get these because I'm going to hand them up for this. No, I just have them. They're in every truck and every tech and every time I have an interaction with a person, here you go, business card and brochure. And speaking of business cards, I went out and got the trifecta uh, paper. If you haven't seen that, it's pretty badass. It's uh, two pieces of like white sandwiched uh, around a piece of I think I got blue. I think there's green, blue, like all the colors, right? So when you looked at it, it was super thick. It was like three plus times the thickness of a business card. I mean, they're thick. They feel so amazing in your hand. But when you look at them, they are awesome. They set it about, it's a business card. The forgotten form of advertising is a business card. But I got new business cards all the time. All my guys got them with their updated information, whatever. I always had them. Getting a better one every year helped me. So when I handed them a brochure and a, and a card, I blew everybody else out of the water that showed up with uh, 
you know, a Xeroxed uh, flyer that they made with, with uh, you know, poor resolution and everything else. So getting marketing, not just to do stuff, but to hand out. Now, on the side of marketing, when you go out and are doing marketing, that's another big expense, right? Reinvesting in that side of things is now you're reinvesting in instant money. You're reinvesting, you're selling yourself, right? If you take $1, if you gave me a dollar, and I said, okay, you give me a dollar, I'll give you 10. That was the easy transaction. Would you not spend as much as you possibly could? Because you're going to make it back, right? Now, it's not as guaranteed as that, of course. We all know that. But when you start doing marketing, always having something out there marketing, especially this time of year, if spring ever gets here, this is the big time of year, right? Because now, if you're in spring, this is the time everybody wants to buy. Even if you book out three weeks, now's the time. And if somebody goes, oh, my prices are too high, say, hey, well, we have a slow time now. Uh, after July 4th, we could book you there. We'll save you 10% by dropping you in there. You can do that, right, to fill up your slow times. But getting those people when they're thinking about it now, even if you schedule them later, is best. So reinvesting in that is huge. Now, whatever you do, EDDM, um, uh, actual uh, 4x6 postcards or uh, flyers or door hangers or whatever you do, make sure to split test them. There's nothing worse than you giving me that dollar for that 10 and I go, oh, uh, I, you know, give me this dollar, and I could give you ten bucks. You give it to me, and I go, ah, no, nah, here's, here's uh, a dime, right? You lose money because you didn't test it. You just thought, well, I liked it, my mom liked it, my uh, employees liked it. I'll send it out. It looks good. No, you need to split test stuff. So don't go crazy. Even stuff you think works, or you get from WCRA, uh, if you're part of that membership, you get all the templates for free. Those have been split tested, but not in your market right? So split test them. Split test them to the degree that you can. Find out what works best. And now you're shining the same light, uh, floodlight or, or uh, laser, right? It's just how focused are you as they knock everything over. The more focused you are, you can put the same amount of effort and get so much more return. 10 20 $30 on a dollar, right? You really, really can as you hone it in. And you should always be testing and split testing. But that's for another show. Um, but marketing, that side of thing is, is always best. And here's something you don't really think about because you think, well, if I get more money, man, that's going to be great. But if you go and you do something where you spend, because now you're split testing to a very like Facebook marketing and that's changed. I know, but if you get something where it's so targeted that you can pinpoint, you've split tested 10 times and you got it down to such a perfect thing. Now the cost of uh, acquisition, right? The amount of money you're spending to get that customer is so low, you could take the same amount that you would have by not split testing and get 10 times the amount of people. You're spending the same amount of money, but you're getting so much more. It's cheaper per person. You can spend the same amount of money and get a ton more, right? So keep that in mind. Split test everything, reinvest in marketing, and get your name out there so people see you and want to buy from you. It's, it's the reason the world goes around, especially in business. So marketing is a huge one. Um, logoing. Here's something that um, I was always a big proponent of. You don't have to go crazy. So logoing is making your brand out there. Now, you're never, ever, 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 ever going to be a brand like McDonald's or something where people just recognize it instantly. You're just never going to happen. Yes, you'll have a few people like that, but you are in a service that comes regularly, maybe six times or uh, once every six months, right? If you're doing awesome quarterly, if you're doing commercial, they don't care. They want you to be seen, not heard. They don't care. Drop off your thing. They don't even remember who you are for the most part, right? So your brand is always needs to be in front of people. You need to, to pound it harder into these people to kind of see. And if you see a truck and that truck's all over town. You go, man, this guy's got a ton of trucks. Look at the logos all over. They got a ton. They don't know that you may be only one truck, but they've seen it everywhere. And that's when you start kind of recognizing things. So logoing just means being um, basically branding yourself for, for the most part. Now, what we're talking about is vehicles. Do you need to get a wrap? If you did a wrap well, yes, get a wrap. They're amazing. Eye catchy. 
When you do a wrap wrong, nobody can read. the cr- Just because you can print a truck that's covered in water drops, don't do that if you're trying to put a thousand words of text over those. Well, you can't see it. You can't read it. It's useless. It just looks like this clown car, right? But if you do a um, clean vehicle where you got some graphics that come in, simple words, just like a billboard. Think of it as a billboard. You want to be simple. Boom, window cleaning. Boom, pressure washing. Don't go crazy. Don't go pressure washing, window cleaning, uh, janitorial roof, uh, 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 siding washing, house washing, concrete cleaning, dumpster pad cleaning. Don't do that. Don't do that. There's no need for that. You just want them to recognize that they may need you, and then your website can sell everything from there. But uh, that's the logo. You're kind of getting that out there. If you can't go and you're not in that place in your life that you want to do a wrap, go with decaling. Right? Decaling is super easy. Very affordable. And you can have people apply it for you. You could do multi-layered decaling, or what you can't see is right off the camera there. I have a uh, 36, 24, something like that. 24 or 36, it doesn't matter. Uh, vinyl cutter, because if I want to make a decal, if I think of something right now, I'll print them up. One day I was sitting in my office, and I thought I saw actually a picture of. Um, I don't even remember what company it was, but it was out of like California or something, and it was this fleet, and it just had come up on an advertisement that was kind of one of those like Facebook advertisements. And all their vehicles had like an inlay of their logo kind of behind everything. And I thought, man, that's cool. Like everything's there, but there's like a shadowy logo. I thought, well, that'd be pretty cool if I could take our logo, just the part of it, not the words, not the name, just the picture. We used a globe type thing, you know. And if I blasted that giant, I mean big, on the side of the truck that overlapped and fell off the truck, you just saw most of it on there, that'd be pretty eye-catchy. We have white trucks in that uh, royal blue. I printed it one day. I was sitting there. Man, all right. Grow it. Print it. I printed it for all the trucks. Trucks came back. We washed them up, um, applied the vinyl, and by the next day, <clears throat> we had these new trucks rolling on. They looked epic. They were so eye-catchy. And this is just using decals. I didn't even wrap the thing. But it was super eye-catchy. People saw it. People noticed it. And that is the key to branding. So do what you can that way. We talked about shirts, but that's exactly the same thing. You want to have clean clothes. You want to have good apparel. And you want to reinvest in yourself and your image just as much as you want to reinvest in everything else. So uh, apparel. The other thing that I didn't touch on with apparel is that you need to be everywhere. Just like you should be in every kind of facet that works as far as advertising, you should have everything you wear branded uh, to a degree. Let's let's be honest. If you wear a hat, that can't be a regular hat. That needs to be your logoed hat that you provide for your, your uh, employees. If you're wearing a shirt, it has to be logoed. I'm sorry. I, this is the biggest thing that people um, send me in stuff saying, ah, I don't believe you, you're not right. But I think you have to have a company uniform to some degree. If you're wearing gloves, think about that. If you're wearing big, buffy, bushy uh, coats like Carhartts and things, get that embroidered because now every guy's got a nice coat, you know. it's It, it goes so far and so noticeable, even if it's subliminal to people, um, that you are on another level of uh, um, professionalism when you do that. So definitely rebranding, spend the money, get what you want, and make it happen. Look amazing. Look as sharp. If you want one of those dye uh, whatever dye shirts, you look like a bass fishing, you know, fishing team. Go for it, go for it. I don't care if you like them or you hate them. It's eye catchy. It sets you up. It's it, it, it's it's something when somebody looks, you go, whoa, this guy is doing it right. So do your thing, whatever works best for you. But uh, definitely, definitely do that. Um. In general, anything that you do to reinvest in your company that creates you to be bigger and better is worth it. 100% worth it. Now, like I said, don't spend all your money. Don't eat, you know, don't not eat because you spent all your money on buying new t-shirts. But I'm not going to go over percentages on, on what I think you should do, but reinvest. That's all you need to do. Continue to grow what you are and who you are to another level and uh, make yourself better. Every single day, make yourself better. Why are you listening to this show? Why are you watching this show? To make yourself better, right? Maybe you learned something. Hopefully you did. Hopefully it just, uh, you know, was was not too terrible. 
But either way, I appreciate you checking us out. And like I said, if you're on iTunes right now, or you're not on iTunes, you don't even listen to us on iTunes, go in there. Search WCR Nation, pops right up, and share that podcast around. I would love it. Really genuinely love it. And even better than that, if you want to reinvest in your company and doing some um, equipment purchasing, big or little, literally, I put in uh, $70 orders. People call me and go, hey, I got everything in my cart. Can you put the order in? That is awesome. That's awesome. I'll call you right now. Let's do it. Give me the card. Let's. It's there. It's done. You've done it. And I get credit for that, and that's the best part. So this sounds salesy like it did play out that way. It wasn't meant to be. Reinvest in yourself. Even if you're not reinvesting equipment this year, which you should be, but even if you're not, reinvest in the rest of the stuff, you know? Um, it's definitely uh, beneficial to you. So either way, like I said, uh, I'm Jersey, and uh, my number again, 862-312-2026. If you have any ideas of things to reinvest in, things that you like to do if you have a spare dime, Put it in the comments below if you're on YouTube. Not only is it going to enter you in for a chance to win, um, it is going to share some of your knowledge with somebody else. That's why we do this. You know, definitely why we do this. And I'm going to start talking about the huge convention very soon. It's coming up. Get your tickets. It's amazing. I'm going to be there. The entire media team is going to be there. So all of us content creators are going to be there. It's going to be epic. And uh, until next time, Go out there and be epic. And uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.